What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. Another GB Studios demonstration here. I had a few people reach out and say we've made some games where we launched projectiles. For example, we had our Thor game where he throws the hammer. And I was asked, how would we do this if instead of just throwing the projectile, what if we want to have our characters swing a weapon, especially in these top down 2D type of games? And I'll be happy to show you that. I have kind of a similar setup to what we've done in the past just to make it more consistent. And if I go here to the top and I go to my sprites, you can kind of see what I have in here. Uh, I have my enemy, which is a blob, and it's just kind of moving up and down. I have my little square character that we made for a few demonstrations before. And then we have this sprite sheet that I created in Piscal that I just call swoosh. And you can see it's like kind of a swoosh motion of some kind of a weapon. And it starts, and then as it travels, it completes the shape, and then it slowly disappears. So it slowly appears and slowly disappears like you're swinging a weapon in kind of a circular motion. And I have it facing upward and to the right. I don't know that you can actually rotate the uh, the sprites in this engine, which would be really nice if you could. And if, if any of you know how, and you can explain that to me, that would be awesome. But basically what I did was I made this four direction and four movement, as you can see. And then I have idle right, idle up, and then idle down. And I have this check mark over here that says flip right to create left facing frame. So that way I wouldn't have to make it all four directions. Uh, but for the idle right, it's facing the right direction. Idle up each frame on there. You can see is, is facing up. And then the way that I flipped the up ones to go down was I just... I just selected these cells or whatever you want to call them. And then up here in the upper right hand corner, you can flip them vertically and flip them horizontally. You just cannot rotate them 90 degrees for anywhere where I can find. Maybe it's right in front of me and I just don't see it. But uh, so I was able to create everything facing down with those for the idle down and then. Moving right, moving up, moving down are the same things. Uh, that's all the sprites that I have for this. And then obviously my background, which I just made the minimum size uh, that you can have for a Game Boy game. So back to the world here. And you could see on this I have on in it. I do have my link square. So that's this little arrow right here where I start it's at x9 y9 on here and it's facing down which means we have both eyes are facing us from the character and then on the on in it I put a I added a event in there just like we've done with all those others and I said attach script to a button and I selected a and then I said launch projectile and I am launching the swoosh and I'm using the uh, default anima animation state. And then the source is from the player. And then I don't have an offset X or Y, but I do have a directional offset. Uh, it launches at the target actor from the target, which is my player. And then I used direction offset of 15 so that that swoosh doesn't appear just in the middle of my square. Whatever direction I'm facing, it is going to be offset 15 from that direction. So it looks like the swoosh is off the side of my character. And then for the speed, I just slowed it down to the slowest speed that they have on there, which is a quarter speed. And I suppose you could use zero speed if you wanted, but just to kind of give the effect like it is being kind of swung out from our character's body. And then for the animation speed, I used 6. And for the lifetime, I have 0.2. Those are some things I may kind of tinker around a little bit with as I want to, you know, try to make it long enough to last to where it can actually hit the opponents, uh, but also short enough 
because I don't want it like I'm I don't want it to look like I'm throwing the sword. I want it to be fast enough of an animation to where it's just disappearing before it gets too far away from our character's body. And then I gave it a collision group of two, and I said it's going to collide with a, a collision groups of three. So whatever my group three collision groups are, that's what it's going to attack in there. That's the on in it part for that. And then I have two enemies here. One of them is just a simple, when it's hit by a collision group of two, which is the projectile, it's going to deactivate this blob right here. Pretty standard. But I knew that I would have some questions like, what happens if you want to hit it multiple times? And what happens if you want to hit it multiple times and you want to, you want to knock the enemy back? Like, how do you knock an enemy back when it's 2D top down? So this here, you know, pretty self-explanatory. The second one that I put in here, the second actor, I have a few different uh, scripts that I added into this. So the first thing is on hit with group two, which is the swoosh animation. Uh, on here, it says store player position in variables. So I used a global variable. I just went on here and I selected by adding a new event, store position or actor position stored in variables. And then I used two global variables. And they said global z or variable zero and, and variable one. And I, then I just renamed them to player X and play, player Y. And that way I could just keep track of those. So once the swoosh from the character collides with the blob, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to store wherever my actor is in X and Y. Then I also am storing the enemy X and enemy Y for that also. Okay, then I have on here a, a few if statements. The first one, so basically what I'm doing is I'm comparing variable with variable if you're looking for it in your event sheets. And I have if player X is less than or equal to enemy x, then uh, I am setting the position of an actor relative to position. And then when I do that, I could say if it's less than or equal to, then I'm going to increase the x tiles by 1. So if I'm to the left, it's going to shift that actor over to the right once it gets hit. Else, it's going to go negative one. So that means if I'm to the right and then I hit it to the left, then it's going to go negative. The other thing I have is another if statement. And I basically did the same thing, but with comparing player Y if it's less than or equal to enemy Y. And if you remember back when we made the uh, game where the enemy chases the character, your um, your Y values are different than what you think because you actually increase as you go down. It's not increasing as you go up. So if uh, it's less than or equal to Y, then we are increasing the Y. And then if it is um, the opposite of that, then we are changing the Y position relative by negative one tile. Now, because we're using equal to or greater than, it's going to actually hit these enemies a little bit at an angle uh, from that, too. Because otherwise, if we just said if it's greater than or if it's less than, what happens if it's perfectly equal to? You know, so I just thought this way it would kind of move it back in a little different way. But you can you can change that formula however you want to with that. So let's see what that looks like here. And we'll push play. And we have our character. And you can see an A or Z on my keyboard. You know, there's definitely better animations I could do with this, but you get the idea. 
for that. So he's just swinging this weapon around. Now, if I go over here to this enemy and I strike that enemy, it's zero. If I'm over here and I throw it, see, because that projectile is is deactivating or being destroyed before it arrives there, it doesn't do anything to the enemy. Now, if I go over here to the right and I hit that enemy, now it's going to knock it down and to the side. And you can see how that effect works. The next question I'm sure that I would be asked would be, how could we set this up to where, you know, after a certain amount of times, that enemy then disappears? Uh, so we can do that easily also right here. So um, I'll go to this and I'll add an event down at the very, very bottom. And we will select variable increment by one. And for this, we can we can use a local variable for this. So if we use local zero, and then we rename it to like enemy life or whatever you want to call it, then each time we hit that character, it's going to add one to enemy life. Then if we go here to On update, we can add event and we can compare variables. So we could say uh, if variable compare with value, we could say if enemy life is go to a comparison and we could say greater than or equal to. And just choose kind of whatever number you want to. And then underneath that, we will add event. And then we can select the activate actor and self. All right. Now we'll try this and we will attack this enemy here. And we hit that and then it disappears. Now, sometimes with this, I think if it if it gets knocked back and that animation is still going on, it's actually hitting that character twice in there. So then I hit it twice there, but it registered it as two. So then that's where I would go back and I would change. I would either change how far back I want that enemy to be knocked back, or maybe I would have it to where this would be destroyed on collision. Or I could make it to where it's not showing up on the screen um, as long and, and have the animation go faster and all those kind of things. And then obviously you could probably have it to where you have different animations for, for different swooshes on there to get more of a variety. But I think this should be at least something that can help you get started. And obviously I would probably too, if if this is more than just a square, I would have like a slight animation change for my character played when that swoosh is going on. So if it was kind of lunging forward or leaning forward a little bit, uh, just to kind of further exaggerate that attacking motion, uh, that would that would be helpful to have in there too. But let me know if this helps you out with that or if it doesn't and then you need some more pointers. As always, I appreciate you all watching and keep the great ideas for more tutorials coming. I'm trying to make tutorials for every single one that's that's shared. So, um, and I'm excited to work on some of the next ones that I have on my list too. Hopefully we'll catch you again soon on another tutorial video.